Hello everybody, I'm Emily coming to you from the basement of Beads of Paradise NYC. Uh, we are a shop and gallery that specializes in a enormous bead collection from around the world in addition to uh, a whole lot of African and East Asian art and antiquities and a whole lot of everything in between. Uh, it's basically like falling into Mary Poppins gigantic endless tapestry bag or Alice's Wonderland tripping into that. Oh, we, we have a lot. Uh, it's pretty awesome. If you have a chance, you should come by and see it. Uh, now, we also do custom jewelry and repairs, and when people walk into the store for the first time, one of the things I feel we hear the most is, uh, how do I make a bracelet? Uh, we hear it so much, I pretty much sure I once uh, made up a song or a rap to it. It's not bad, it's not good, so uh, I'm not going to share it. Uh, but that's how often it gets asked. People want to make bracelets. It's a simple, easy thing to do uh, with your beads. Uh, now, I teach the classes at Beads of Paradise NYC, which we haven't been able to hold in person because of the pandemic. Um, but I'm going to do some videos to show you some things to do uh, from the comfort of your home or, or wherever you are. Uh, and a lot of people in these classes say, I have a huge amount of beads hanging around my home. Uh, whether they inherited them uh, or they got them from a collect from world travels and collecting them, but they just don't know what to do with them. And so that's often why people come to take the class. Um, and one of the great things also about, about vintage beads and inheriting things is that you can always cut them apart uh, and reuse the beads and make it more your own. So stretchy bracelets are one of the easiest things to do. Uh, really all you need are your beads, uh, you need your stretchy cord, and we carry it in a variety of sizes. This is the sort of kind we use the most, it's kind of rubberized one. It doesn't have like a huge pull, but I find it wears better, and it comes in in different sizes. And I can't figure out where I put all, all of my little samples, but you know, it can go from, from pretty thick, the one millimeter, all the way down to something much skinnier. But my advice is always, uh, no matter what you're using, to always use the thickest cords that you can because that makes the whole process a whole lot safer. Uh, though, feel free to use the very skinny cord and the delicate cord on your stretchy bracelets um, if you want to. Uh, and just be a little bit more mindful of that. The great thing about jewelry making is that, you know, there's some little rules and guidelines to go by, but so much of it is up to you. Um, so I want to empower you today to, to just sort of have fun with it. So like I said, you need your cord, uh, you need your beads, you're going to need a little tube of crazy glue, which we do not sell at the store, but you can find that pretty much at any drugstore, um, staples, etc. Pretty easy to grab one of those. Uh, we often use the cutters, uh, which I think we sell online as well. If not, I can make sure they're on there. But you could use a little uh, pair of scissors in a pinch, uh, especially if they're like little thread scissors. They're pretty easy to use. So, like I said, the easiest thing to do is just have your beads and toss them on your cord. I actually just was up on the floor of the store and grabbed a whole pile of um, different little bowls of beads. And this is also just a small, teeny, teeny tiny example of, of as much that we have put them on the cord, sort of randomly at will, and, and it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Um, so when you're stringing it, you're going to want to keep in mind the size of your wrist. Uh, and you can hold it up to your wrist, because with a stretchy bracelet, usually, thankfully, unlike with something clasped, you do want the two edges to touch. Um, and that will also depend on where you like to wear your bracelet. Some people like to wear them really tight, some people like to wear them low, some people like me that has a very, very teeny tiny wrist, uh, always, if, if I bought them, they always sat very low. But since I learned how to make jewelry, I'm like, hey, I can make them that actually fit me. So that's also a great thing about making jewelry by yourself is that you can make the design you like and you can make it so that it fits you. Um, so like I said, you could hold it up to your wrist and just sort of eyeball it. If you one of those people that feels more safe with like the extreme measurements, uh, you can use a measuring tape and sort of hold it up to your wrist. Uh, and if you like it tighter, you're just going to want the two sides to touch and measure it at that point. Um, or if you want to wear it lower, you're going to want to measure it there. Um, and I would usually add like a, a quarter of an inch or to half an inch, depending on the size of your beads, to make sure it's not like super crazy tight. You want to leave a teeny bit of room. 
But like I said, you can always hold it up to your wrist uh, to sort of to, to, to gauge it before you do the final closure part of it. And like I said, the closure part is the simplest, one of the simplest things to do. You have your crazy glue, you have your cord, and I'm going to shift the camera so that now you can see what I'm doing. You just have your cord and your beads, and you're just going to tie a simple, basic knot like so and I pull it nice and tight and doing this in and of itself isn't really going to hold very well so that is why we add the little dab of crazy glue and I pull it out and you're going to be very careful with the glue I especially if I'm trying to be very careful if I'm working with smaller beads and want don't want this to touch the, the, the glue to touch the beads I hold it apart with my fingers but if you just want to dab it in there that that also works uh, and very, very gently, because this glue can sometimes pop out. You want to use very minimal pressure just to add a dab of glue to the knot. I might hold it like this and, you know, let it breathe for a second to dry. And then to cut it, all I do is I take my cutters, or if you have little scissors, thread scissors, you are going to want to get as close to your knot as possible, because you want this whole little mess to be, not to not be a mess, basically. Uh, so you want to cut very close to your knot. And then with the bigger beads, yes, it will sit inside. And then you have a little bracelet that you could just pop on. I did another example with kunzite beads. It's the same size cord, the same procedure. Uh, and, you know, you can hardly see where there's a knot. And again, I could just toss that on my wrist. And see, in just a few minutes, I made two stretchy bracelets. So this is a great way to spend... Uh, an afternoon. Uh, so I'm going to have a link up in, in the summary uh, to show you how to get to the website uh, or you're welcome to come into the store as well. Um, please subscribe if, if you sort of like this I, the idea of my little uh, tutorial videos. I'm going to be doing some more of them uh, and bear with me. This is my first one. Have a wonderful day. Bye.